Hello and welcome to this A-Level Chemistry question walkthrough where we're looking at questions from the kinetics topic. You can download these nine questions from the description, have a go at them yourselves, and then watch my video and see how you got on. An excess of magnesium reacts with hydrochloric acid to form hydrogen gas. Line X on the graph shows how the volume of hydrogen gas produced changes with time as magnesium reacts with 30 cm cubed of one molar hydrochloric acid. The reaction is repeated, this time using 20 cm cubed of 2 molar hydrochloric acid. That's a higher concentration. And all the other conditions are the same. Which line shows how the volume of hydrogen produced changes with time? Well, because the concentration has increased, in fact it's doubled, the rate of reaction will also increase and so the line will be steeper. That doesn't actually help us because all four of the lines, A, B, C and D, are steeper. So we have to look at the final height. The final height is the volume of hydrogen gas that is produced that is proportional to the moles of hydrochloric acid used because the magnesium is in excess. So the moles initially is 3 times 10 to the minus 3 and conveniently the final position is 3 lines up. And so for our new condition when the moles increases to 4 times 10 to the minus 3 this is going to be an extra third again as much hydrochloric acid used and therefore we're going to make that extra hydrogen gas as well. So this time we're going to be four lines up and so B must be the correct answer. A is far too high, we're making twice as much hydrogen and we're not using double the moles of hydrochloric acid. C is the same amount of hydrogen and that wouldn't be the case and D is actually making less hydrogen. So B is the only one that it can be because it is making 33% extra hydrogen because we're using that same amount extra hydrochloric acid. So B is correct. The question below is about the Maxwell-Boltzmann distribution shown for a sample of gas X at two different temperatures. Which statement is correct for the higher temperature? Well, first of all, we know that the right hand of the two curves is the higher temperature. We know that because the peak is smaller than the lower temperature and it has been shifted to the right hand side. A. The area under the curve to the left of the activation energy decreases. Well, here's the activation energy and for the lower temperature, the area under the curve is everything to the left of this arrow. For the higher temperature, it's the same thing, but obviously the graph has shifted. Now, rather than looking at what's to the left, we could also compare what is to the right. For the lower temperature, we've just got this area, and so that is definitely smaller than the area for the higher temperature. And since the area under the curve is proportional to the number of molecules, if there are more molecules to the right of the activation energy, there must be fewer to the left-hand side, and that means that A is the correct answer, because the curve has shifted to the right-hand side, more of the particles have got energy greater than or equal to the activation energy and so that means that the reaction is faster and so that must mean that there are fewer molecules with less than the activation energy. Just to check the others, the total area under the curve increases. Nope, that is the same for both of them because we're not changing the number of molecules. The activation energy decreases. Nope, the activation energy stays the same, it's just the number of molecules that have that activation energy that changes. More molecules have the mean energy. Well, the mean energy changes. At the lower temperature, the mean energy is Q, and this is the number of molecules that have it. At the higher temperature, the mean energy is S, and we can actually see that fewer molecules have that mean energy. So those three are wrong, and A is correct. The apparatus in the figure below was set up to measure the time taken for 20 cm cubed of sodium thiosulfate to react with 5 cm cubed of hydrochloric acid in a 100 cm cube conical flask at 20 degrees C. The timer was started when the sodium thiosulfate was added to the flask. The timer was stopped when it was no longer possible to see the cross on the paper. And you can see here is the experimenter looking down through the conical flask at where the cross was marked on a piece of paper. The reaction mixture is in here. This is a reaction that produces a precipitate of sulfur and that obscures the cross so it doesn't really disappear but we can't see it, which is likely to decrease the accuracy of the experiment. Rinsing the flask with acid before each new experiment. Well, this is actually the answer, because since acid is one of the reactants, introducing extra acid at the start of each experiment will mean there's more acid in the flask and the sodium thiosulfate will therefore react faster. So A is correct. 
Provided your stirring is consistent, that will actually increase the accuracy and certainly wouldn't decrease it. C, using the same piece of paper for each experiment, well that ensures you've got the same size cross each time, so again, that will increase the accuracy. And D, using different measuring cylinders to measure the volumes of acid and sodium thiosulfate, that will increase the accuracy as well because that will ensure you don't get contamination and that the reaction doesn't start before either of your chemicals is introduced to the flask. The Maxwell-Boltzmann distribution of molecular energies in a sample of gas at a fixed temperature is shown here. Which letter represents the mean energy of the molecules? Well, first of all, the y-axis is the number of molecules with a particular energy, and the x-axis is the amount of energy that that might be. And so we've got two situations, two different energies and two different numbers of molecules with this energy. C is the most probable energy, and it's called that because it is the peak of the curve, and A is the number of molecules that have this most probable energy. This is different to the mean energy because this is not a symmetrical curve. There is slightly less curve to the left of this most probable energy than there is to the right-hand side. And so that means that D must be the mean energy and the correct answer here, and B is the number of molecules with that mean energy. And so D is correct. The diagram below shows the Maxwell-Boltzmann distribution of molecular energies in a gas at two different temperatures. Which letter represents the most probable energy of the molecules at the higher temperature? Well, the curve has got two axes. This is the number of molecules on the y-axis, and on the x-axis, this is the particular energy. There are two temperatures. We know that the graph on the left-hand side is the lower temperature because all of the energies for this particular curve are bunched up on the left-hand side, and that's representative of the fact that there is less of a spread of energy at the lower temperatures. The higher temperature, the curve has shifted to the right-hand side and its peak is lower and the hill for the energy is more spread out. D, therefore, corresponds to the peak for that curve. It is the most probable energy for the higher temperature and the right answer. And B, as an aside, is the number of molecules that have that particular energy. A mixture of 2 dm cubed of hydrogen and 1 dm cubed of oxygen is at room temperature. Which statement is correct? There is no reaction to form water because the molecules do not collide with sufficient energy. Well, that seems very, very plausible. If there isn't enough energy, there will not be a reaction to form water. This reaction needs some activation energy to get it started. Once it starts, then this reaction will be quite quick. So A looks like it's going to be correct. So let's just check the others. There is no reaction to form water because the molecules do not collide with sufficient frequency. Well, they will be colliding, but it's the energy of the collision which means that there will be no reaction at all. C, the mean velocity of the hydrogen molecules is less than the oxygen. No, all gases behave ideally, they will have the same velocity. And D, the partial pressure of each gas is the same. No, because there's twice as much hydrogen, there'll be twice the partial pressure. And so A is correct. Here we're being shown a Maxwell-Boltzmann distribution curve with the number of molecules with a given energy on the y-axis and amount of energy on the x-axis. The question is asking us what the total area under the distribution curve represents. Is it A, the total energy? No, nope, that's not the case, because what we're showing is we're showing how many molecules have a particular energy. So here, this is the number of molecules that have got this much energy. Is it the activation energy? No, nope, that would be a particular point on the x-axis, say, picking at random here. The total number of reacting molecules. That's a tricky decoy here because it's not the number of reacting molecules. The reacting molecules will be these to the right hand side of the activation energy that I drew and those are the ones that will react. So this is the area under the curve past the activation energy, which means D must be correct. The total area under the curve, so the entirety of this graph, is representative of the total number of molecules present. Which statement is correct for the distribution curve of molecular energies in a gas? Well, let's just quickly sketch a typical molecular energy distribution curve, Maxwell-Boltzmann distribution curve. Is it A, the curve is symmetrical about the maximum? No, you can see from the diagram that I've drawn that on the left-hand side, it's a nice regular slope on its way upwards, but on the right-hand side, it's an asymptote. So the curve goes down steeply, but then it gradually gets shallower and shallower, but never meets the x-axis. So that's not correct. 
there are always some molecules with zero energy. Note, you can see that this graph starts at zero, zero, which means no molecules, in fact, have zero energy. C, the position of the maximum of the curve is not dependent on the temperature. Note, that's absolutely not true. As the temperature increases, the maximum of the curve will increase as a result, and the peak will get shallower. That means that D must be correct. The mean energy of the molecules is greater than the most probable energy of the molecules. That's certainly true. You can see for my first graph that I've drawn here that the mean is slightly higher than my most probable and the most probable corresponds with the peak whereas the mean energy is slightly to the right of the peak and so D is correct. Which statement about the addition of a catalyst to an equilibrium mixture is correct? A. The activation energy for the reverse reaction increases. That's not true. The activation energy decreases in both directions by the same amount. And you can see this from the reaction profile. If we have the reactants on the left and the products on the right, we've got the hill that shows the total activation energy going from left to right, and it's this value going from right to left. If we use a catalyst, that hill gets shallower, and so that means the activation energy is decreased by the same amount in both directions. B, the equilibrium constant for the forward reaction increases. No, it would in fact not actually change at all for the addition of a catalyst, it's only temperature that affects the value for the equilibrium constant. The rate of the reverse reaction increases. This is in fact correct. The rate of both directions will increase by the same amount and so the position of equilibrium stays the same. So C is correct. Okay, that's the end of this question and the end of this video. I hope it was useful. I'll see you again soon.